Hello, it's Matt here, and I want to share with you the number one problem that most salespeople face and don't even realize they're facing it. And here it is. You are the best kept secret. People don't realize that you're even in the business. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I've talked to a real estate agent recently, and he's a great guy. And he's always in the neighborhood, and he's kind of the mayor of the West Loop, and I love him. And he went to uh, his doctor, and his doctor had just sold his house. And he said, oh, if I would have known just a month earlier, two months earlier, you know, I would have done business with you. See, he did not have that target market list we talked about, but he also did not have his conversion processes down, his sales conversions and his marketing processes down. So let me explain. You probably heard of these statistics before, some version of them. And here it is. 46% of salespeople only make one sales call. Now, why do you think they only make one sales call? Well, because we usually as salespeople come out and tell them everything we know in that first meeting, and then we leave. They didn't say yes, they didn't say no, and then we look at the phone. Well, should I call them? Should I not call them? They didn't call me. And so we don't have that process of what do we do next? And so then the next statistic is 15% uh, only make two sales calls. And why do they only make two sales calls? Well, again, they just call and say, hey, do you have any questions? No? Okay. Bye. So again, there's no process and we've all had that. So on that second call, say, hey, I'm calling to get some feedback and then have a scripted feedback questions so you can get feedback. So if they don't have any, then you have other questions. We talk about that in our trainings. 10% make three contacts, but here's the deal. 80% of sales contact happen between the seventh and 12th contact. And I say that's BS. 80% of sales happen after the 16th contact, and it's, it's all how you measure it. But 7 to 12 personal contacts, maybe, in, in my business, I know that it's 16, 20 contacts. It's an infinite amount of contacts. Now, certainly, um, there's the people that are at different uh, positions in the sales cycle. Uh, so what is your sales cycle? How, how often does, do people turn over the inventory to buy uh, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever you're selling? So there's a system and process to it. And you can write this down. is 4% of salespeople make 64% of the sales. So no matter what industry you're in, the top 4% drives 64% of the results. The top 1% drives over 51% of the results. And I know this, uh, you know, in, in my business and my employees is, you know, the top 1%, I call it the warrior attitude, the person that solves the problem and go gets things done. So in any business, 1% is driving over 50% of the results. And so what is your conversion process and how do you lay that out for yourself? So in meetings, I, we broil down our meeting process to four meetings. Now, I think there's many different ways you can lay this out. Yours might have six processes, might have two. It's all on the idea of trust-based selling. And so the four that I say is this. Number one is you have an interviewing meeting. You, have a, uh, you come out, you have an introduction and interviewing meeting. You have to qualify that. Number two, you have a value proposition meeting. What's your value prop? What are you going to give them that's your X factor that's different than everybody in your industry? See, if you look at any industry, and this is how I developed the X factor, which we'll do in depth on another video, but 80% of what you're selling is the same as your next competitor. But they have an X factor and you have an X factor. But we focus in on the 80% rather than those X factors. What's your value prop and have a value prop meeting? The next one is a relationship building meeting. Build the relationship. It's not always going to the bar and drinking or something like that, but it is some kind of a camaraderie building meeting. Um, so what can you do to frame up and build that relationship? And that could be also through content marketing and different things. And then lastly, minimum, you need a closing meeting. How do you close somebody? Now, I put these meetings pretty linearly, if you will. You know, the interview and, uh, and qualifying meeting, the value prop, the relationship, and the close meeting. But the reality is, you might get to a closed meeting right, right in the first meeting. I get that. You might have a relationship building the first meeting. It depends on where somebody is in the sales cycle and sales process. But here's the deal. You need to have at least four well-scripted meetings because you're going to deepen that relationship and deepen the trust if you could run those four meetings. And depending on the type of business you're in, it's, it depends how quickly you, can, you need to run those four meetings. What's the sales cycle? Where are they at in the sales cycle? Are they not ready? And then you push those other meetings out maybe six months or nine months or a year, which is fine. But you have to have four well-scripted meetings so you're not that 46% that makes one sales call because you tell them everything in that first meeting 
and you don't have that process set up. So to find that sales process and that conversion process on the sales side for yourself and you'll have more success and you, you know, by not rushing the sales process, you will rush the sales process. So by not coming out and rushing it in that first meeting, but by not rushing it, you will shorten your cycle and you'll speed up your sales process. So be the top 4%, creating 64% of the sales and the revenue in your industry and have a great sales process.